You're still watching Ways. Now, Professional Speakers Day comes on August 7 of every year. It is a special day to embrace the people who stand up on a stage, speak about any subject, informing, educating, and covering the very natures they espouse. Now, celebrate the Professional Day by stepping up and learning something new on this day. We learned something new today. Yes. Polymath. Uh, well, you learned it new. I knew it. Now, Yusabi, we Google. <laughs> We have to Google it. <laughs> Uti, <laughs> what did you learn new today? There's something that there's actually something I didn't know. I had to Google it. <laughs> yes. that's why we have Google, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but 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 honestly, um, you are a professional speaker as okay. a Toastmaster. <laughs> even though you're not collecting money yet, but you're a professional sure? speaker. How's the journey been so far? And when did you start the journey? Okay, so I would say that my communication journey started even before I knew I was doing it. Mm. I was a very, very active child in my local church. And believe it or not, I was really addressing adults and they would listen to me. So having recognized that, you know, this is something I do offer without even knowing it. That's why I joined Toastmasters. Mm. And I'm like, if you want to do it, then you have to learn how to do it well and do it properly. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. We have, a, we have a great show today. All right. So Uti, let's start with you first. What did you find for us in the news? Okay, so um, the long-awaited reopening of worship centers, uh, which was announced by the uh, state governor, we talked about that last weekend. Mm -hmm. So the days are, or the day has finally come. So today the mosques were open, and on Sunday the churches will reopen. But I was happy to see that some churches. So the headline here says, "COVID-19 Day Star Christian Center won't reopen from Pastor Sam Adeyemi." So. I was happy to see, I mean, I'm happy to hear that or to, you know, to that we've gotten to a point where worship centers are reopening. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also important to know that the license to reopen does not mean that you should reopen exactly. even if you're not ready. Yeah. Mm. So the senior pastor of um, Daystar Christian Center, uh, Pastor Sam Adeyemi, has said that congregational worship will not commence on Sunday, August the 9th, um, and that we will... Um, Online, online services will continue, but ensuring that they will not reopen until they can ensure the safety um, and meet all the health protocols has been stated by uh, the government. So for me, this story just stood out to me because it just shows the level of care and responsibility that the church is taking towards protecting its members. That you're allowed to open does not mean that you should open before you are ready. Remember that it's 50% capacity, wash hand basins, sanitizers, adequate social distancing must all be in place before we can return to our, um, our places of worship. So I was really happy to read this. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so, so happy. happy. I'm, I'm, I'm all blushed right now. You know, like they're socially responsible. Yeah. It makes and you know, the thing is, Uti, apart from the 50% capacity, for Daystar, 50% capacity is a lot. So, you know, the, 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 the numbers... It's a are, lot. It's yeah, a, it's, it's a, a really lot. Big, it's a big church and there are multiple services. Yeah, so you only allow 50. Flow. So what's so, the point? Exactly. It's acknowledging the reality of your circumstances exactly. and knowing that, you know what, we can't do this safely yes, just for yet. Now. So, yes. I mean, we have other mega churches in Lagos. It is important that everybody is taking those same precautions. Absolutely. Um, really, really to protect, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. protect the congregation. Absolutely. Well yeah. said. <laughs> so, AK, what did you find for us? Well, my story is taken from the Vanguard and it's one that's perplexing. It says, Bauchi governor appoints special assistant on unmarried women. Mm -hmm. So the governor of Bauchi state, Bala Mohammed, has appointed Balaraba Ibrahim, a special assistant on unmarried women. So I took this further. BBC um, News reported that actually the caption is wrong. It's actually um, for divorcees. Now my take is, forget the title, whether it's unmarried women, whether it's divorcees, what happened to the Ministry of Women Affairs? Mm -hmm. Why is it so um, important that it has to stay on its own, stand on its own, and have a special advisor, you know, appointed to it? And it just gets me to the point that what, what do our politicians take us for? Mm -hmm. Is it that they do not think that we can react, or it just it well, doesn't sit, it it doesn't doesn't sit, sit well. well? 
Because this can... We're complaining of government overhead. Let me even help you. We're complaining that the overhead is is too much in terms of, you know, um, salaries and, and all of that we want to cut and we're down. Creating Why are we creating offices? a new office for something that it can sit perfectly well, well in well. The, the, the women affairs, in the ministry? And you know one thing? The woman is already doing this. So she's a chair lady of some non-government um, organization that's actually looking out for divorcees. And probably there might be a cause, maybe there's really a situation that needs to be addressed. But I see that the government can support this cause under the Ministry of Affairs. And well, let me just point out to you some other funny appointments. So in Kano State, they have SA, that's um, Special Assistant for Graveyard Matters. Wow. In that same state, they have Special Assistant for Street Lights. And of course, in 2017, in Imo State, Ministry of Happiness. So really, I think that on this show, we should really talk about citizenship rights and how we can demand accountability from, from our, our leaders. leaders absolutely well said honestly all right so my story is also very um it's quite a sad one because um we complain that we, we don't have money we don't have money and you know when you see certain things and you just keep wondering where would this when would this end so the caption is i got it from business the 100 billion public investment wasting away in Kano. Mm. when i read this story it was so pathetic now so the this the the overall um summary of the story is that the previous administration, I think 17 years back, they've had different projects, very laudable projects that they had done, thinking that it would bring political, social, economic benefits to the state. And now the current governor, most of those projects that they invested over 100 billion mm -hmm. naira on, most of those projects are just there. Some of them abandoned, completely neglected. Nothing is being done, you know to finish up those projects to be able to, you know, at least let it start to bring economic mm. value to the state. So when we say we want to vote in our leaders, where is the place of continuity? Exactly. Can't we have a, 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 a blueprint that whoever Plan comes into that state. place will just plug in and play? You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Get a proper blueprint, right? This is the direction of where this state or this is the direction of where the country is going. Have a vision. Have clarity on that vision. So whoever is coming in, regardless of what party you belong or whether, you, you, whether the ex-governor was your friend or not, it doesn't matter. This is the plan. This is where we're headed. And this is what must be accomplished. How can we waste? And they said the, the um, IGR of Kano is between 1 to 1.2 billion. Wow. So this is like almost all your IGR that you have Hundred, invested. 100 <laughs> billion. 1,000% more. Do you understand? It does not make any sense at all. Wow. So I'm just wondering that when will this end, you know? Well, you make, you make valid points. It's but I'm sad. sure that everyone is just looking for something that they can but, but slap down. Yes, dear. You know that this is just an example of Nigeria as a whole. So I know that this state in particular is being used as the headline for this story, but this is what we've seen time and time again in Nigeria. And this is why we are where we are. Because your story, um, AK story, all ties together in the fact that public funds are just being shared out in the national cake system and we're not getting value for our money. And on the other end, when the government runs out of money, what do they do? They find some other way to tax the public. Now, exactly. people usually are not adverse to paying taxes when they know the money is being used properly. But when the money is being spent to create new new um, MDAs and it's being just that, that I mean, it, that there's complete chaos in our system. Exactly. When you were speaking about this, I just thought to myself, let's just play, go back a few weeks to the NDDC versus the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. <laughs> I will just leave it there. Ah, we'll see, really, <laughs> let's leave it there. Like I want to faint right the now. But <laughs> well, let us go on a break. Let me go and faint. We'll be right back. <laughs>